excellent. So, uh, Pete Lesperance, um, I'm very glad to see you got a new product out with Harem Scarum. Thank 13. you. 13. Where's uh, the, the concept come from, number 13? Well, the concept of uh, 13 is pretty simple. It's our 13th album. All so, right. <laughs> that was really the long and the short of it. We, uh, you know, I mean, we felt it was a bit of a milestone. I think it's kind of cool that everybody else thinks it's uh you know potentially bad luck or whatever so yeah we we didn't have a, a song title that we really were loving as an album title so we just decided to go with the obvious and call it 13. keep it simple you know exactly now pete uh, for guitar tones and stuff like this i find you you got a very good guitar tone in this album and uh you know what what you do differently from uh the past well, actually, uh, this album is quite different because I used sorry, let me put the computer down here. I I used uh, the Axe Effects Two exclusively, and I didn't even mic cabinets, so I used the Axe Effects Two direct for the whole record. So when you look at guitar simulations and that, would you say it's, it's stronger now than it's ever been? Oh, uh, well, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of good ones out there apparently, but I've got the Axe Effects, like I said, and I just love it. Um, I run it through a tube preamp right into Pro Tools and clean dirt sounds, all the sounds. It's just, for me, it's it's amazing. It's just a huge, huge, uh, huge advancement and, a, and just a game changer for me as a studio musician, especially. I mean, I do take it on the road and, and I think the modeling thing is great because it's like carrying around, you know, five or six different $5,000 tube heads, you know, and you can get all those different sounds out of this one unit. So I'm, I'm completely blown away with it. And I'm obviously I'm convinced because I didn't mic a single cabinet on this record and nobody, nobody <laughs> would know. I don't think. No, you can't tell. I mean, and, and it's, it's funny that today's day of age, you know, people still do bring the, the amps, you know, and mics and all that stuff in studio and uh, on stage as well. You know, well, you know, it's a weird thing. Like, I, I get it. Like, the guitar purists, right? I mean, they, they people just, just can't imagine that something without tubes and without, you know, the usual where a guitar came from. And I kind of understand that to some degree. I have to admit myself, like, for the Boot Swings 2 record, I used the Axe Effects as well, but I used it with a power amp and, an, and a Boogie 212. So I mic'd everything. So it was still a cabinet, and it was still moving the air. I was still not convinced. But in between then and now, I've used it on all my session work, and I just fell in love with the thing. And I just thought, you know what? I'm going to do the whole Scarum record with, without an amp. And I did. And like I said, I could not be happier with what I got out of, you know, on this record. And uh, Pete, did you experience much with different guitars and stuff on this, or you know, just straight some guitars? No, I really didn't. I uh, I use what I kind of always use my go-to guitars. I used uh, a 1988 uh, Gibson Les Paul Studio and, and uh, a uh, a Bill Nash Telecaster. Those were my two main guitars on the whole record. Excellent stuff. What I got to say, the sound quality is very uh, deliverable. You know, it's good. You know. Well, thank you very much, man. Well, I mean, you know, it's. I think it's about your ears as much as anything. Like the beauty of the Axe Effects is that it's so you can go so deep into it that you can tweak forever. But that only works if you've been listening to your guitar sound forever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So the, any piece of gear really is only as good as as your ears, and and you need to hear the sound in your head first, I think. But that's the beauty of these kind of uh, these kind of units, and the Axe Effects in particular, is that it, you can get that sound that's in your head. That's that's the thing. You know, you buy a tube amp and you love it, but then you go, oh, I'm hearing this, and you can't get it out of that. It just cannot happen. With this, there are just it feels to me like there are just no limitations. Right. right. Yeah. The artwork for um, you know with the concept of this album, where did it come from, and you know all those great ideas? Well, it all came from Carl Bexton. Uh, he is our uh, artwork, our graphic designer, I guess. He uh, he did our Mood Swings two package. And uh, we liked his work so much. I mean, as soon as we knew we were making a record, we called him immediately and asked if he'd like to be involved. And, uh, of course, uh, we were lucky. He said yes, and all's well. He, uh, he came up with everything. And it's incredible. Like, nobody will ever know the detail that this mad genius <laughs> puts into his artwork. He sent us a, a JPEG with every little detail mapped out and telling us what everything was. It was very, very interesting. I mean, when you look at the 
the circle on it, you know, it's, it's kind of got that star, um, I forgot the TV show, you know, uh, Stargate and all that stuff inserted in it, it seems, you know, there's a lot of stuff in it, detail as well. Well, he wanted to go for something, uh, you know, gothic-ish, but clean, and uh, yeah, he uh, there's a ton of detail, like I said, in every little detail matters you know what i mean you see a bunch of numbers on there they actually matter it's pretty cool and uh I've, we've had a bunch of people kind of ask us what it means and we're reluctant to tell them because we just want them to kind of either a figure it out or b have their own concept which was always something we loved as kids you know growing up looking at actual album covers when it was big enough that you could check it all out and try to read things into it so we're hoping our fans are going to do that especially since we're actually pressing vinyl for this record that does a good thing to know you know vinyl today you know, it's way more famous than it's ever been, you know, yeah, in the past exactly. few well, years. So well, good to see you guys are going on that route. Well, we are. It's a very limited run. We've been doing a pledge music campaign for this new record, and uh, we're doing a limited run for uh, for that. So it'll be the first time we've done vinyl, though. I'm, uh, I'm interested to hear it. Now, will this, uh, since it's been, you know, digitally made, you know, for a CD, I, I imagine, will will there be tonality differences with the vinyl, you think? Well, that's what I'm interested to see because, frankly, I'm not really that uh, hip to what's going on in, in the vinyl world. I don't listen to vinyl myself. I don't have a record player. And, uh, yeah, I really have, no, uh, I really have no, nowhere to base anything on. So that's why I said it's going to be very interesting to hear what it sounds like because I know the album, obviously, sonically so well. It's going to be a, a good indicator to me of what vinyl really sounds like. So I'm, uh, I'm interested to see. Something else I see you no know, marked on this uh, album is a uh, Darren Smith marked, you know, as a member. Is that a uh, like Darren Smith a real member of uh, Harem Scarum nowadays? No, no, I wouldn't say so. Uh, Harem Scarum is a bit of a weird animal. Harem Scarum is really just. I mean, it's me and Harry, but there are definitely people that are important, like Creighton Doan, for example. I mean, he's been playing drums on all the records for a really long time and you know he's a huge part of our sound and obviously Darren's backup vocals are a huge part of our sound but Creighton has a lot of his own stuff going on you know in his own world and Darren is singing for Red Dragon Cartel and you know what I mean so the the drums bass thing in our band is kind of in flux I mean I played bass on the album so we don't actually have a bass player okay well it's good to know yeah now, social media, the life's changed throughout your career, you know, as Harem Scarum, you know, days of much music and stuff. Now it's all social media. What, what do you think of that balance now? Well, I, I mean, I'll tell you, uh, if when I think about it as, as what I would have thought when I was younger, oh, my God, I would have loved this. It would have been amazing to be able to have a website and a Facebook page and put up videos and post, you know. I mean, I think it's a really amazing tool. Um, but unfortunately, like most amazing tools in technology, uh, it comes along with the technology that also kind of has done some serious damage uh, to our industry. Right. So it, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, you know. It's, uh, I love the technology. I love the fact that every band can update and blog and do all the stuff that everybody's doing these days. Um, I think, unfortunately, another downside to it is that a lot of bands and a lot of musicians are spending an awful lot of time doing that stuff and honing their skills as social media specialists instead of working on their instruments, which, you know, in, in a bit of a more pure time, you know, not to sound like an old guy, but you know what I mean? Really, all you had to do was do your thing. You know, and now you got to do your thing, and now you got to do this thing, and there's no more record label, so you got to do that thing, and it really kind of, uh, yeah, I think I think it really uh, it it really is a different animal. It has its upsides, but it also has its downsides. So hard to say, you know, really hard to say. No, I've been saying that for a long time. You know what you just said. It's it makes total sense. The musician is not playing music anymore. He's being a businessman. Well, exactly. I always say I got it. I started playing guitar, or I, I decided I was going to do this for a living because I didn't want to, you know, be a computer guy, and I didn't want to be a. And now you have to do it all. So and you know, get paid a lot less for it. <laughs> yeah. So it's an interesting time for musicians. I'm glad I was one when I am. You know, I'm glad I started when I did. <laughs> it's going back to the gypsies. You know, back in the, the days. You know, when there was no money. Uh, do you seem to seem to see that? Absolutely, man. Uh, I think. 
I think uh, I think we're all thinking the same thing these days. You know, being a musician equals being poor and being poor for your art. If music chooses you, if you are one of the unfortunate ones uh, that music chooses and you have no choice but to follow that muse for the rest of your life, right. you best be prepared for, uh, you know, for a journey, <laughs> to say the least. It's a, it's, a, it's a tough burn out there these days. And Pete, uh, what do you think of videos now? Are you guys going to release a promo video for a song from the new album, 13? You know, I seriously doubt it. I mean, we're 45-year-old men, you know what I mean? I don't think we need a rock video. I really don't. We didn't even, there's not a single picture on the record because we're just like, you know what, we don't care. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. That's not part of our thing, you know what I mean? It's just... We want to make it about the music, and who cares to see? I mean, even videos these days, all the video channels are gone. It's a thing on YouTube, and yes, I, I agree, and it's cool, and sometimes they go viral and whatever, but I'm telling you, from my perspective, putting out videos of, like I said, some 45-year-old rock band jumping around and, or whatever, doing whatever, you know, even doing the live performance thing, um, that's not going to do it, and that's just noise to me. Like that just that just fills up the space where somebody should do something cool. What I'd really be interested in, if anybody out there is an animator, <laughs> uh -huh. to take on animating a harem scarum video in any way, I think that would be cool. And as well, they do lyric videos now. You know, making, yeah, absolutely. making them look good. Yep. No, that is. True. That is very true. And I would be far more interested in doing something like that than doing your typical rock video. You know what I mean? Where you pretend to play your song and pff, I'm not into that. I wasn't into that when we were doing that and I'm not into it now. So, <laughs> Well, you guys made it look good in the past, you know. And, okay. uh... and Well, it was a time, right? It was a different time and things, uh, you know, things were different back then. It's really that simple. There was a lot more money and, you know, well, and A, you know, we were a lot younger at that time and you know, the visual part of rock and roll in a lot of ways and that sort of thing is definitely a young man's game. There's no question. And, and I'm not in any way saying that I feel old or feel, you know, even old to be playing the kind of music I make. But at some point it becomes about something different. You know what I mean? And and I don't think our music is about us being pretty, man, because we ain't. So you know, at this point in our lives, I think our music is about people that have been listening to Harem Scarum for years and, and know Harry's voice and maybe know my guitar playing and you know, it's the music that's really important and kind of always was to us. You just get caught up in all the other shit. Right. And, you know, you, you don't forget, too, you know, Friday nights, people drinking a few beers at home and they put on YouTube to watch some videos on their big screen, you know, and have some harem scare them. They probably still do that. You yeah. Know, and no, you're not wrong, man. You know, I mean, and it's a different world, right? I mean, I don't do that. I mean, I'm hardly a music, you know, or at least rock music listener. You know, that's not something that kind of that I would do in my world. So frankly, I really don't know. <laughs> I don't know if, if our fans would like to see that kind of thing or, I mean, who knows, right? It's so, it's so varied. So Pete, just to finish here, is there any tours, you know, uh, gigs coming up, you know, to promote this 13 album? Well, we're looking, um, we're, we're looking at uh, potentially Japan in, uh, in the end of May. And hopefully there will be some European stuff as well. So yeah, we're hoping it's all going to roll forward i mean we did the mood swings 2 tour last year and it seemed very successful and all the promoters were quite happy so we're going to work on something because we want to get out and play this music for uh, for our friends and fans because we're we're pretty proud of this album so well pete it was a pleasure talking to you, you know about this new album oh, and the sound quality man great very nice to talk to you Jake. thank you man you're very welcome well you have a good good one and uh, keep in touch and i'll send this uh, interview to uh, frontier records and i'm awesome. sure okay Thanks, Jason. All right. You have good interviews. See you. Thanks. Take care. You too. Bye-bye.